Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting logo animation tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to create a stormy logo reveal animation in After Effects. You will also learn how to create a lightning effect, add raindrops and rain effects, and create a stormy environment in After Effects without using any third-party plugins. But before we begin, I have provided a download link for the assets in the description below. Alright, let's jump into After Effects. So right now we are in After Effects, and first of all we need to create a new composition. Click this box and give the composition a name. You can see the rest of the settings on the screen, then click OK. Nice! After that I'm going to import our assets file. Double click on this panel, locate the files, and you will see there are different types of files including folders. First I select these two files and then click the import button to import them. After that, double click on the panel again and this time select one of the folders, for example clouds. Make sure to click the button called import folder. And our folder is imported into After Effects. You can see there are several images in this folder which we will use later in the tutorial. Alright after that once again double click on this panel to add one last folder. Simply select it, click on it. Nice. So we have imported all the assets we need. Now let's create our text, or you can import your own logo. It's up to you. As a tutor, I'd like to tell you there are two options for creating a logo. The first is selecting the text tool and typing your text. For your reference, I am using the Horseman demo font, and you can download this font, the link is in the description below. The second method is to create your own logo in Illustrator and export it as a PNG. I have already created my logo, so I will simply import it into the timeline. Let me increase the size of this logo. Okay, now it fits perfectly. Next you need to pre-compose this logo. Right click on the layer, choose the pre-composition option, name it logo, and then select the checkbox called move all attributes. Then click OK. Perfect. Let's lock this layer and click the eye icon to turn it off so it will be invisible in our composition. All right, in the next chapter, we will learn how to set up our clouds. First, go to this panel, click the clouds folder and open it. You'll see there are lots of PNG images. Simply select all the images, drag them into the timeline and drop them here. Right now, all the cloud layers are in the center of the composition and we need to change the position of each cloud. Let me show you how. Simply click on the first PNG and check the small box called Solo. If I click this box, only this layer will be visible in the composition. Then, drag the cloud around here and lock the layer. After that, Solo another layer, select it, change its position as well, and then lock the layer. I want to fill the composition with clouds, so I'll repeat this process and change each cloud's position until I cover the entire composition. You can place the clouds randomly, there's no fixed position. Alright, I've completed this step, and you can see I've almost covered the composition with clouds. After that, you can unlock the layers and uncheck the solo buttons. Then, select all the cloud layers and check this box to convert them into 3D layers. Now, select this option, and you'll see there are three view options. Simply select the two views option. This allows you to see the composition in two views at the same time. Let me explain it a little better. The left screen is our active camera view, which is our main view, and the right screen is our top view of the composition. In this view, I can see the clouds from above. For example, if I select the Z direction and move it this way, you can see in the left screen that the cloud is moving farther away. So, we can control the position of the clouds here more accurately than in the active camera view. That's why I selected the two views option. I hope you understand these basics. Now I want you to select each cloud layer one by one. Select the layer, choose the Z direction navigation point, and move it this way. Let me draw a line. 
All right, we need to move all the cloud layers in this direction to create depth of field. Make sure you don't move the clouds in the wrong direction. All right, let's select each cloud layer one by one and move them. You can randomly adjust the cloud positions just like I am doing here. All right, I've just finished this step and it's looking good. After that, select some of the cloud images and change the blending mode to multiply. I'm doing this because if some clouds don't look good when overlapping, you can change the blending mode to multiply or screen. For example, I'll choose this layer and turn the blending mode to screen to blend it better. If you encounter problems, I suggest changing the blending mode to screen. So I've set up the clouds in the composition, and in the next chapter we'll learn how to set up the lights. To add the light, go to Layer, New, Light. This box will open. In the Light Type options, you'll find four types of lights, but you only need to choose the Point Light. You can name the light, for now I'll call it Point Light 1. You can also change the color of this light, and you'll see the rest of the settings on the screen, then click OK. After that, we need to change back to the two views layout again. Then select the Z direction navigation point and move it until you find a nice position for the light. Once you're done, you can switch back to the one view layout. Then I'll move the light to this position and lower it a bit, around here. After that, I'll select these two PNGs and change the blending modes to screen, as I mentioned earlier. You can experiment with the blending modes to achieve the look you prefer. After adjusting the cloud blending modes, you can drag the light around to see how it looks. Next, it's time to turn on our logo layer. Unlock it, then select the logo and turn it into a 3D layer as well. Now you can see our text has turned black because the light is placed behind it, casting a shadow. For example, if I switch to the two views layout again and drag the point light in this direction, you'll see the text light up in the left screen because now the light is in front of the text. And if I move back the light, you will see the shadow of the text. Hope you understand the concept. All right, let's get back to our default view. Now we can move forward to animate this light, which replicates the lightning effect. So move the time indicator to around eight frames and open the position properties of this light. Add a keyframe. Then move the time indicator to around 22 frames and add another keyframe and add one last keyframe. Now, move the time indicator to the first frame. Look at these values. This is our light position and since it's a 3D layer, our light can move in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. So, to move the light back into this composition, I change the Z value of this layer. Simply select and drag the Z value to move the light in the Z direction like this until it disappears. Then copy the first keyframe and paste it onto the third one. Now check the RAM preview. Nice, it feels like lightning is happening behind the clouds. Let's create more lightning using a point light. Move the time indicator to around one second and duplicate this layer. Then move this layer like this. Then cut this layer at this point. Select the point light two layer and open the position values. Then select all the keyframes and move them like this. Now set the time indicator at the middle keyframe, then change the light position like this. Click on the position stopwatch to remove the keyframe. Then click it again to create a new keyframe. This will remove the old keyframe positions. Now simply drag the time indicator to this point and change the Z value of this layer. Move this point until it disappears in the Z direction. Then move the time indicator forward a bit, around here, and copy the first keyframe and paste it here. Now check the RAM preview. Nice, it looks perfect.
After that, move the time indicator to around 3 seconds. Then duplicate the point light too. Move this to this point. And again cut this layer here. Open the point light 3 layer position values and recreate the position keyframes. First, delete the keyframes. Then select the Z value of this layer and move it forward like this. If needed, you can switch to the two views layout, which will make it easier to adjust the Z position by dragging the navigation point. Alright, so I'll switch back to the normal view, and click the stopwatch to add a keyframe for this light. Then I'll drag the time indicator forward a bit, and create two more keyframes to animate the light by adjusting its position. Copy the first keyframe, and paste it onto the third one. After that, move the time indicator to around 4.5 seconds. Duplicate the layer, and drag it to this point. Select the point light 3 layer, and cut it at this point. Then open the light position values. Move the time indicator to the middle keyframe and turn this keyframe into a Bezier keyframe. Select all the keyframes and expand them a bit so that the lightning animation looks a little slower. Check the RAM preview. Nice. So we've set up our lights successfully. In the next chapter, you'll learn how to add lightning. All right, first of all, select the logo layer and duplicate it. Then move it above all the layers. Drag it to this point. And one more thing, you need to turn off the 3D option for this layer. Nice, it's time to add lightning to our composition. So simply go to this panel and select this footage called lightning. Select it and double click on this footage. It will open in a separate layout. Now play the video by pressing the spacebar on your keyboard or check the animation by dragging this point. As of now, this footage has a loop, but we need to cut a certain part. So I drag the point to where the lightning animation starts and mark this as the start point. Then I drag it again to where the lightning finishes and mark the end point. Now that we've successfully cut our footage, go back to this panel, select it, and drag it into the timeline. Place this footage around here and check the preview by dragging the time indicator. One more thing, it's not transparent yet, so select the blending mode and choose screen. Now we can see the rest of the elements in our composition. After that, drag the time indicator to where the light illuminates and adjust the lightning footage accordingly. Select the layer and go to Effects, Color Correction, Tint. Then go to the Effects panel, where you can change the lightning color to your preference, as I'm doing here. After that, search for the glow effect and add it to this layer. Nice. Now I want to adjust the tint color slightly. Now it looks much better. After that, select our logo, then select the rectangle tool, and create a rectangle on this layer. Basically, I'm creating a mask on this layer. You'll see a mask generated under this layer. Simply open the mask options, and you'll find mask path. Click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Drag the time indicator forward a bit, and create another keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe, select these two points, and drag them this way so that the logo is invisible. Check the RAM preview. You'll see this mask helps us reveal the logo, but right now it's a very harsh line. So go to the mask options and find mask feather. Increase the mask feather to around 300 pixels so you can see a smooth blending in the transition. Then select both keyframes and turn them into Bezier keyframes. 
you can adjust the timing by dragging the logo layer. Now check the RAM preview. Perfect, it looks great. All right, we've successfully added our lightning to the composition and created a logo reveal transition. Let's move on to the next chapter. Let's add rain effects. So, go to this panel and you'll see the raindrops folder. Open this folder and you'll find two videos. Select raindrop 1 and drag it into the timeline. Place it above the logo layer. And after that, change the blending mode to screen. Now open the opacity value of this layer and set it to around 23%. Next, select the second raindrop footage and place it above the raindrop 1 layer. Again, change the blending mode to screen and adjust the opacity to around 19%. Select the ellipse tool and create an oval shape around the logo. You'll see a mask generated under this layer. Change the mask option to subtract, then open the mask properties. You'll see mask feather, set it to around 220 pixels. Nice, it's looking good. Now, select both layers and add a keyframe to the opacity values. Then move the time indicator to the first frame and change the opacity to 0%. Alright, let's see the RAM preview. Nice, it's looking good. At this point, I'll add a keyframe. Then move forward and change the value to 0%. Alright, we've just set up our rain effects in the animation. It's almost complete, but I want to show you how you can create a custom lightning effect in After Effects for more customization. Alright, in this chapter, I'll show you how to create a custom lightning effect in After Effects. Simply select the pen tool and create a line like this. Make sure you draw the line where the light is illuminating. After that, set the stroke width to around 6 pixels. Rename the shape layer to Lightning 1. Change the layer group color for better recognition. Click on the Add icon to add a trim path to this shape layer. Drag the time indicator to the first frame and solo this layer. Open the trim path options and add a keyframe, then change the end value to 0%. Move the time indicator forward and change the value to 100%. Then select the start keyframes and move them forward. Check the RAM preview. Let's adjust it a little. After that, select the layer, go to the effects panel, and type turbulent displace. Add this effect to the layer. In the effect properties, change the amount to around 913 and the size to around 31. Go to the search bar and type Taper Options. Open it and change the start length to 35% and the end length to 45%. Now check the animation. It looks nice to me. After that, close the options, go to the Effects panel and search for the Glow effect. Add the Glow effect to this layer. In the Effects panel, change the Glow Threshold to around 67% and the Glow Radius to 64. Now duplicate the Glow effect and reset the values. After that, close the effects and check the RAM preview. Then change the Blending Mode to Screen. Check the layer at this point and place it below the logo layer make it a 3D layer. Open the position properties and change the Z value to adjust the position of this layer like this. You can use the direction points to change the lightning position as I'm doing here. If you want, you can increase the width of the lightning. Now check the RAM preview.
Nice, it looks perfect. So that's how you can create a stormy logo reveal animation in After Effects without any plugins. And right now I'm going to tell you that if you're interested, you can download this logo animation template from my website at a discounted price of $7. I've also given you a coupon code called STORM. If you apply this coupon code, you'll get an additional $5 discount. This offer is valid for the first 20 people only. If you like my content, you can support me and my channel by buying me a coffee, and the support link is available in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next video.